Now here's an important note that once you've put the uh, epoxy into the liner, you've got to let it run out. Okay, you've got to make sure that it it it's all it needs to do is produce the thinnest lining on the inside surface. That's it. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is to make sure you keep this little tube in position because uh, you want, as it starts to harden, you want the epoxy to, if there's any blockages in there, just keep, uh, keep it running out uh, so that you don't block anything. And also, most important is you don't get any epoxy on the threads. So by putting the tube on the inner hole, the epoxy runs uh, along that tube and not onto the threads. That's quite important. So, and I do just block up the side and blow on that hole just to make sure there's no blockages and then just leave it there till it dries. This one I'll wait seven hours, so I'll probably install it tomorrow. I'm going to show you a, a rough uh, example of how a float works. I've just put a bit of perspex in here. It leaks like a sieve but it'll give you an idea of what the needle is supposed to do and where the line is. You can see that line is obviously the standard set position for when the float closes down the, uh, the needle and it'll sit in that space uh, and then I'll show you what the tickler does and how it pushes that down. Just a nice graphic example to help you. It also helped me to understand whether there was an issue with possible overflowing. So that's why I did it, but it's nice to show you. So we just put some fuel down the line and you'll see the chamber filling. And you see the float will start to rise. There we go. Can't take any more. So what we do here is the tickler pushes that float down, opens the valve, the needle valve, and it allows more fuel in to flood. Okay, so that's how it works. All right, we've got the classic ammo um, leaking happening on this side now I've already cleaned it with wire wool um, being careful not to get any wire wool or any ingress into here at all um, so I put the new gasket on I screwed it down still leaking like a sieve so the only other option I have available to me is to um, make sure this face is square now I can already feel a little nick there so I'm going to just Put it on 400 grit. Oops. Completely square. Now you can see an area where there's no contact whatsoever is on this side. So that's already an issue which we can resolve. There we go, nicely faced. All right, what I've noticed is you can see around the mounting screws holes that the screws pulled in tight and created uh, the outer edges, the flanges to lift. So we don't have it square, you can see it there. So it doesn't matter how much cleaning I do, that's still gonna leak like a sieve. So we've got to find a way of getting these brought back down again. Always a challenge. Now, the only way I think I can get this is I don't want to damage the graphics. So I'm going to put in a very stiff, tight, adjusted. And just see if I can help it without breaking it. Definitely getting some movement out of it. Yeah. 
whole thing is bent. Now that's looking smoother. Right, let's put it on the carburetor and see. Taking drastic measures here. Trying to clean this face up a little. Yeah, you can see all on the faces. It's really uh, pushed in. So we keep going. It seems to be working. Let's see if that works. Oh yeah. Well, that was uh, that was good. I filled up the reservoir, um, pressed the tickler so that I got fuel running out, then cleaned up all around here just to check to see if any leaking. And as you can see, there is not. This is dry as a bone. It's those little things just before you want to start the engine. And get all excited and you realize you're not done yet there's still a few things you have to do You don't put well seal on there. You don't want to get anything in between the pure fuel going into the carburetor. And also the gasket will have to do. Now it's a very important key point, And this is why you saw in previous videos, you would have seen me having to flatten off this face because it, these two ears have been bent in. So when it bends in, then air and gets in and it becomes inefficient. We need to put the seal in, the rubber seal, and then you need to put this flat gasket on. And this flat gasket really is there to stop you from over tightening um, this carburetor. So let's get that gently in place. If we can't get it flush, then we know all's good. That one feels nice. That one's kind of, it literally just stops, and you know that's it, done. Okay, that's more than you need to do. There you go. Take it even lower. 